What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my starter guide for Inkbound. Now, if you haven't heard about Inkbound yet, this is just about to drop into early access, and it is one of the indie games I have looked forward to the most this year. This is the next game from the developer Shiny Shoe. Those are the folks that did Monster Train, which many of you may know that is one of my all-time favorite indies. Absolutely love it. It's a car-based roguelike, uh, just super, super fun game. And I've been playing this a lot. I got about 15 hours in so far. And honestly, there's not really anything else like this. This is super cool because it's a cooperative roguelike dungeon crawler. Uh, really, really unique concept. Ton of fun to play. I'm not even going to do a proper review on it because honestly, it's just that this is a 10 out of 10 to me. I love this game. I'm having so much fun with it. Uh, but in this video, I really want to go into everything that you need to know to jump into it. Because the first couple hours I played, there was a lot that I was confused about. There's a lot I've picked up along the way. Uh, and honestly, this is one of those games where the more you know going into it, the more fun you're going to have. So let's jump in. Now, right now, we are at the central hub. In between every run, this is where you're going to go. Uh, main housekeeping types things here. You're going to have different NPCs that will have little bubbles. You can run through those to get dialogue. Occasionally, if you come here and you finish a quest, there'll be like a golden arrow somewhere. I don't have one right now because I've knocked out most. Uh, but if you see a golden arrow, follow it, talk to the NPC. The main thing I want to talk about here is the aspect apparatus. Clicking this is how we change to various aspects. These are the different characters that you take out on runs. We have three to start, the Magma Miner, the Moss Cloak, and the Weaver, and then you can unlock the Obelisk and the Clairvoyant through additional quests. There's five more slots currently for additional characters. Those aren't currently in the game, or if they are, they're super hidden and I don't know how to unlock them. Uh, but for the time being, all five of these characters are very unique. They all play very differently. Uh, and we're going to start with just the Moss Cloak. This is one of the most basic characters. It, it can almost be thought of as a rogue. And we're going to use that while we go through some of the explanations. Uh, so before we dive into a run, some other kind of housekeeping stuff. So up top, this is where your character's at. You can see health as well as the amount of will you have. These are your glyphs. These are your quillings. Those are currencies that you use in the run. Uh, some other stuff. You have your three main bindings right here. You're going to pick up two additional bindings on the run. These two slots right here are going to be for your uh, potions as well as fish that you pick up throughout runs. Over here, we have a bunch of different slots. These are where vestiges go. Think of those like artifacts that will enhance your character or augment your abilities in some capacity. Besides that, looking at an ability, you'll also notice three little ticks. Those are for augments that you can get. Your ability can get up to three different augments that will enhance its capabilities. On top of that, the abilities can also evolve into a higher tier. That'll happen much later in the run. Uh, down here, the blue bar, this is your will, which determines your potential to attack or move. And then over here, we of course have our health. Some other things down here, this magnifying glass pulls up our stats. This exclamation point is going to pull up any current quests that we have. Over here, this little helmet will pull up the various cosmetics and whatnot that we can put on. Of course, your boy already has the cowboy hat unlocked. Over here, we have the uh, season pass as well as the cosmetic shop. There is a free tier. The, uh, the actual season pass isn't bad. You can earn enough shinies doing the season pass to just infinitely buy it. So really nice to see that. I like when, when you're rewarded, like, you know, you buy the season pass and as long as you're playing, you can just keep buying it, which is something I really like. I, I hate when you, know, you get season passes and then it's like, well, you got to buy next season. You earn some of it, but not enough. Uh, cosmetic shop, a bunch of goofy stuff. I've bought a couple things already. You know, I piped this on my, uh, my Weaver. He's probably my favorite character. Um, but either way, cosmetic type stuff, pretty much everything in here is, is mostly cosmetic, aside from being able to earn shinies, which you can, this, of course, use those in the cosmetic shop. Uh, moving on from there, over doop, here we have our emote wheel, different emotes you can do in runs, and of course we have the settings button. Now talking about an actual run, we have an unranked dive and a ranked dive. The main idea with ranked dives is they have increasing levels of difficulty where modifiers are going to be applied to your run. So it could be enemies start off shielded or the, uh, you know, upon doing damage to an enemy, their attack is going to go up. Various things like that that are going to make the runs more challenging and more difficult. So there is always room to improve. Uh, but for now, at least we're just going to do an unranked dive. So let's click that and we'll jump on in. Really can't wait for this game to like fully come out. I've, I've have at this point, I got uh, close to 15 hours in. I've completed a run with all five of the different characters. I've also killed all three of the major bosses, which we can see the three right here, Cinder, Argoloth, and then the Shadow of Runestone. Uh, but at the start of a run, you're going to pick what you want. In this case, I'll just choose Cinder for now, and then we're gonna head on out. 
So a couple things. The start of a run, you're going to have a vault as well as a chance to pick up an augment. The vault, this is going to give us our first vestige that we can choose from. Now we have a very simple scheme here where it goes like gray to green to blue to purple and then eventually to yellow. So kind of following that legendary color tier. Uh, but this is, like I said, a passive that we can pick up. So in this particular case, um, this one would actually be really good for me. But Counselor's Ledger ensures my first move is always free. I'm going to go, I mean, this is technically a better, but Twin Fangs works really well. This character does really well with crit build. So I'm going to pick up that. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to get an augment. Now, augments, as I mentioned, these are going to change things. So for example, throw deals 35 damage. If I pick up this, it's going to go up to 45. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick up this shielding dash. In general, I try to go for utility or stuff that's going to enhance uh, the, the length or the width of my abilities over just pure damage. If I'm doing pure damage on an augment, I'm gonna wait till it's a higher tier, a like blue or above, because you know at blue tier, this is gonna be like plus 30 damage. And if you get it at like a legendary tier, it's gonna be like 50 or 100. So I'd rather save those because we only have three different augment slots on our weapons. So for now, we'll pick an augment and we'll jump on it. So here we have different worlds to choose from. Uh, when it comes to picking a world, honestly, I would go down here and look at the various quests you have available and then choose a world based on that. There's different quests to do in certain areas, but for now, we're just going to take Garden's Edge. Now, when a run starts, you'll typically see a couple glowing objects. You'll see these throughout the run. When you click on these, you're just going to gain some quillings. Typically, it's between about 10 and 15. So I picked up two. You can see I got 26 total. And then we have a choice here. So I can get a common augment and a quilling cage or a common augment and a tarnished vault. Uh, personally, I like to load up on quillings at the start of a run. So I'm going to go for the quilling cage. I'm going to run across. Got a potion supply here. And you're going to randomly encounter things like potion or fish throughout your runs. Now, to start the combat, I'm going to click that. I'm just kind of running around seeing what else we got. Some more quillings right there. I'm going to go ahead and click that and start combat on off. Now, a couple different things I want to point out now that we're actually into combat. We can see an arrow. This designates that this particular enemy is going to attack me directly. Whereas this enemy, you can see an aura expanding out from him. And that represents that he's going to do an AoE move. Now, if I were to queue up a binding... I can see I have a small space and I can use my binding within this space. Now, if I go out of this initial circle, you can see down here, my will has gone down. So within here, there, it costs no will to move within this initial circle. In this outer circle, it's gonna cost one will. So for now, at least I want to try and do a move or I could you know, take the will to position myself better and try and get some damage in. Um, either way, where we're at right here, I'm going to but with this character, I like to do dash, and then I go into flurry. But what I'll typically do is I'll queue up an ability, and then I'll see, you know, can I hit multiple enemies with this? What type of hit am I going to be able to get? And I can see that I can't get two, so I'm going to end up moving so I can get two. Now, right here, we have a power orb. We're going to use that in a second, but first, so we're going to move over here. You can see my will has dropped down to three because I'm in the larger circle. I'm going to use my scavenger's dash. I'm hitting two enemies here with it. And you can see I didn't do damage, but what I have done is I've marked them. So now they receive 100% incoming damage, and I gain a shuriken for each enemy or ally that I've passed through. So I'm currently up to three shurikens, which I can use all of those with flurry. So now that I've gone ahead and gotten some damage in, I'm going to go ahead and select fury. That costs one. I'm going to throw that out. Two easy kills. Now you'll notice that both of these are now on cooldown. You can see looking at them, this has a cost of one and a cooldown of two. Cost of one and a cooldown of two. But a power orb is going to spawn each turn. And by selecting that power orb, you're going to gain an additional will, and it's going to reduce all of your active cooldowns by one. So in this case, I positioned myself, I went up, I attacked, and both of those went onto cooldown, picked up the will, reduced those by one, and now I'm left with two will, which I can use to just toss out shurikens and knock that enemy down. With the turn done, we go ahead and hit this check right here, and we're going to continue. So we have two enemies here. I can go ahead and pick up that, but I'm not worried about it just yet. Instead, we're gonna, same thing. We're gonna dash through. We're going to knock them out, and then they're dead. Not even worried about it. So we have a Font of Wisdom. You'll see these quite often throughout runs, and these are just passive bonuses that you can pick up. Typically, these are gonna be one of the best ways to restore HP between runs. Uh, being that this character is very crit-centric, I'm gonna go for the 20 critical damage. Pick up the Quilling Cage, get a nice little chunk there. 
uh, about 89 on them, and then we have an augment. Uh, so, shurikens dealing five extra damage isn't a bad choice. It's not the best, but it's a little early to start re-rolling. I could re-roll once just to see if we get anything different. And sure enough, here we go, increase dash range. So anytime I'm going to get something that increases the range of an attack or increases the AoE, that's almost always worth in my opinion. Uh, range and AoE type stuff is, is quite powerful because it's going to make it just that much easier to, to hit your opponents. So from here we have one choice. We have to go get a trove of bindings. This is a fishing spot when you see those. Go ahead and get a helmet crab. Now, one thing I want to point out, that we have both potions as well as fish. Potions are basically single use in combat, and typically they go for one turn. So in this case, it shields. Shields will persist, but uh, if I had something like ability power, it's only going to be for that turn. Whereas fish are lost at the end of combat. So in this case, you know, this one isn't all that powerful as it's just going to be three shielding. But if you were to get a fish that's like, you know, 20% crit chance, it's good to save that until a big boss encounter because you can pop the fish and you're going to have that extra crit chance for the entirety of that fight versus a single use, which is what potions typically are. So running on over here, I'm going to pick that up and we have our binding tuner. Now, since I only have three bindings, the first thing the game's going to do is have me pick up a new binding. And I have a couple different choices here. I got poison vapor, cone of frost, and then pilfer. Now, what I want to point out is you can see this is going to deal magic damage. We can also see that from the icon up in the corner. This is also magic damage. But if I look at all of my bindings, physical, physical, and physical. Now, we have a couple of different types of damage here. We have ability power, which is just flat out. Ability power is almost always going to be worth it. Each point of ability power is going to be a 10% damage increase on everything. Magic or physical doesn't matter. And then you also have physical power and magical power, which are both going to be 10%. So because of this, if I'm going to go for a split build working with both magic and physical, ability power is something that I want to seek out more of that's going to be more valuable to me. Uh, in this particular case, Poison Vapor isn't too bad because this character doesn't have a ton of AoE. But one thing that's important to note is status effects, stuff like Poison and Burn, they aren't going to deal damage until the turn is done. So if you don't have a lot of damage mitigation, you could have a ton of poison up and enough that you're going to kill enemies. But if they're still going to get a hit in on you first, it may not be worth it. So in this case, I'm going to actually reroll. Rerolling this is going to require a glyph. As you can see, I have three glyphs up here. I'll go ahead and reroll. And we have shield wall, which is defensive. After image, which is going to give me a stack of evasive and critical charge. And then jinx, which jinx is a magic ability and it's, it's typically like a boss killer. Uh, so I'm going to go with after image. Crit works very well for this character. One thing I want to point out here, and I don't know if this is this is a bug or if it's something that'll change, but it says gains critical charge in a random binding. From my experience, this is almost always going to be the next binding used. So I use after image and then I use flurry and all of those are going to end up critting. So we're going to go ahead and pick up that after image is a very good choice for this character. And then we got a vault or a quilling cage. So let's actually we'll, we'll go for a vault this time just to show kind of the difference more of that just looking around seeing occasionally there's stuff on the sides but generally most of the little pickups are going to be on the way to the thing or before the thing so typically anything before i'll always pick up anything after i can get on the way but regardless let's jump in and begin another round of combat so where we're at you can see have a bunch of different enemies here and what we're going to try and do is we're going to dash first i'm going to go over here now I could move out and potentially hit three enemies, but these little guys aren't all that strong. They only have 50 health. This is going to deal 35 damage, but we got good crit chance. This is going to deal 35 plus shuriken. So we're going to go ahead and dash up to this guy. And then we're going to use that attack. And I need to position myself just barely so that I can hit all three. I'm not going to be able to, but this guy's the bigger threat. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, wait, there we go. See, and this is the tricky part is you want to, what I like to do is when I'm in my circle, I want to queue up the ability that I'm going to use and then use WASD to move around and kind of position it to where I can hit all three enemies, as you saw right there, because sometimes there is a certain angle where you can pull it off, um, which on the note of movement, this actually works really well on Steam Deck. Almost all of the time I've played so far has been on Steam Deck. It's been quite enjoyable. So those are on cooldown. Um, I'm going to be attacked no matter what. So what I'm going to do here is use this. That's going to give me one stack of evasive, which is just going to completely dodge and attack. You lose this between turns. I'm going to go over here 
And even though I have, you know, I have zero, I'm positioning myself next to the power orb. So I'll go ahead and pick up that. That's going to give me one. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to hit both. But this enemy isn't going to hit as hard as this guy. You can see this dude is dealing four damage. This guy's dealing two damage. You can see that that little number right on their bar. So I have evasive up, so it doesn't really matter. But this guy will be a bigger threat as time goes on. He's also going to create blight pools as time goes on. So I'm going to go ahead and take him out. End turn. This guy's going to attack. But of course, I have the dodge, so I'm all set there. Similar. Let's go this way. I'll get two stacks. I'll go ahead kill both of them. That takes out the strong enemies. And then we're going to get right over here. Now, I'm not going to be able to do enough damage to kill them, but we can go ahead and throw out hit the power orb. And I may, may be able to hit two enemies with a little bit of finesse. Uh, now, other things to look at, we see the pool down here. So if you look at my health, I can see how much damage I'm going to take. So right now, all three of them hitting me, I'm going to take that much health, which would be six in this case, because they're each dealing two. If I stand in this pool, I can see there's a seven here. So I'm taking three damage right now versus seven standing in the pool. And you can see how that's changing. I thought they'd be doing six. Are y'all doing two, two, two? Hmm. Well, anyway, the point is we can see how much is going to be incoming. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out. And now I have those two are going to attack me. Oh, I had some shield up. That's why. So we are looking pretty good here. I definitely want to kill this enemy. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to position myself in a good spot where I can get him and the others. I might be able to just kill him outright. Let's see. I could kill him outright without charging. So what we're going to actually do is leave this area here. Throw out our shurikens. And then we're going to dash through, hitting these three. They're all marked. We've got the power orb. Keep in mind, 100% incoming. So we'll go ahead, knock all of them out. And then, even though we're not going to be able to kill this thing, we'll get some damage into that. And we'll end our turn there. Got a little bit of shield up. Go ahead, throw that out. I wonder where am I? Oh, here we go. That's right. Scavenger's dash is providing the shield. Kill that enemy, and we are done the round. So, with this vestige, um, random binding. I'm not that worried about being immune to root and ensnare, but. 10 movement can be really useful since I don't have strong movement on this character yet. So I'll pick that. We have a Font of Wisdom. Uh, don't really like any of these, but to be honest, I don't want to waste a glyph on just rerolling something so early. So in this case, I will pick Poison Damage as this character comes across a lot of poison. And we have a Common Augment. Target gains Precise. 100% crit damage per stack. I'm critting lose all stacks. That's actually huge. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. And we'll grab that. And we'll continue through. So now we have more choices here. Um, at a tethered shrine, you're typically going to find one of these guys that we just opened up. Um, the carver, you can usually heal as well as buy vestiges. You can spend your coins on vestiges. And then we have sea breaches, which are a little bit riskier. Sea breaches typically represent a, a big, big bonus of some sort that may come with some negative. So I'll take Sea Breach just to show that. So in this case, I gain 25 health total and despair. So I gain more health, but any incoming damage goes up 20%. And this I could um, spend 150 quillings to heal, don't need that. And this I could offer my glyphs, but I would have uh, plus 10 permanent HP. So, unfortunately, none of these are really strong choices. I'd rather save onto my glyphs for uh, respec. And that's kind of the, the thing with the Sea Breach, is, is with the Sea Breach, you don't really know what you're going to get. I've had some where I've been able to just give it a random binding, and it's just straight evolved it for free. So, I tend to like Sea Breaches, but like I said, they're a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, so, in this case, that plus, this means permanent health. Over here, that's just going to be a heal. This is going to be a full heal. I'm actually going to leave this. I'd rather have my glyphs for a reroll. And then we have hard combat or regular combat. So the big difference here, you can see this is common. This is going to be uncommon. And these are typically going to give you better rewards, but there's going to be much more enemies. And if you're not ready, these are typically going to be where you die. 
Uh, another thing, this next turn, there's a good chance that it's going to spawn a Quilling Cache. And those are these enemies that you have two turns to kill to get a buttload of Quillings. So, at a risk of making a fool of myself, we're going to go for a hard combat encounter. I'm going to try and get that guy as well as see if I can survive. Grab those. Just looking around, seeing if there's any fish or anything I can pick up. There's not. Go ahead and begin the combat. And this is the enemy. 450 health that I'd have to get through. Uh, but I have, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. So we're going to go up to here. I'm going to dash through. It's going to give me a lot of shurikens. I'm going to buff myself with crit. And then I'm going to throw. And you can see I'm doing massive, massive damage from that crit that I put out. In this case, I've almost completely killed that enemy. Uh, I have enough shield from dashing through those enemies that I'm not going to take damage, even though I'm standing in this AoE. So we're going to go ahead and end turn. Even though we don't have that power orb, that's going to persist. So we'll be picking that up this turn and putting out some damage to finish things off. Grab that. Dash through, hopefully hitting both. There we go. And kill these two enemies. It's an inky power. It's not very fun. Uh, you're gonna heal. You got the markup. I can probably kill you. Do I need you? We are gonna put some damage into this. I really gotta max out, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna kill this thing first. Because I can see, looking at this enemy, uh, that in two turns, it's going to restore HP to everybody. So I want to get that out of the way now. So we're just gonna go ahead, toss out our shurikens. And I'm still gonna take some damage from all these enemies that are gonna hit. But this is where we're going to go ahead and pop our shields. So popping both of those, you can see I've mitigated out a fair amount of the damage that's going to come in. Now we just got a clean house. When this enemy loses more than 50%, it becomes enraged. So if we're going to kill them, they have to be in a single hit. we got to just take them out. So we're going to grab that. I'm going to try and get a good angle where I can hit multiple enemies. I need a good end spot, though. Actually, I might not want to dash. No, I'm going to have to dash. Okay. So, let's go there. Hit over a little bit more. Not going to be able to get all three, but that's okay. I can do most of the damage I need to these enemies. Not going to be able to... Oh, damn, I'm going to have to put everything out to finish these dudes. And this is kind of the, this is, like I said, we're taking a hard combat encounter. A little more of a risk. Um, and you notice we're standing in this. I don't want to take my first action in here. That skull means I will die this turn. Now it means I'll take 25 damage. So I don't want to take an action while I'm standing in that. And I can see I can't get fully out of it. We can see that because it's blinking. So in this case, I'm going to stand out of it first before I take an action. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Grab that. Kill the three of them. I'll kill him. He's a much bigger threat. And these other two, I'll be able to survive. So at this point, we're basically set. I'm going to go ahead and pop that up. Grab the power orb. And just throw one of these out. Taking them both down. So, we did lose a little bit of health. But keep in mind that we now have a superior vault waiting for us. And an uncommon augment. So we'll hit up the Font of Wisdom. I'm going to go ahead and pick up that 8 health. Like I said, these are a great way to heal uh, between combats. I'm going to go over here, get the superior vault. See a couple different things here. Uh, for my build, this one's not bad. Getting just pure physical power as well as damage resist. Over here, every time we hit something, we can inflict some bleed. That could be potentially useful. Uh, but none of these really stand out. I'm going to go ahead and just get a reroll here. See if I get anything that's even better. Shining circlet can be pretty good. Let's pick up that. It'll give us extra cooldown reduction. Pick up an uncommon augment. And then we will go quick dash. That gives us two dashes. And then we'll go over here. Pick up trove. This is going to give us our next binding. Giving us a total of five. Uh, for this case, oh, what do I need here? None of these really are what I need. Let's reroll. I could do cleave. Cleave is good for some strong AoE. Cultivate can actually work out really well as well. Let's go for cleave. I'll pick up the potion supply. Uh, over here, do a couple different things. You're going to have certain unique areas, like the garden. The garden is unique to the zone we're in. Um, 
usually you're going to pick up a couple of different quillings there, usually a, a shrine. But beyond that, I usually like to stick with the more standard ones. Now, in this case, while I could go to the Carver's Refuge and heal, I really want to pump my bindings up because I'm going to be coming up on a boss and I have 600 plus quillings up here. So we're going to do binding empowerment. That's going to give me a rare augment that I can pay for and then uh, an additional one. So going with this 75 crit damage, that's going to be huge because I'm already using this to apply crit. And then we'll get an uncommon here as well. Uh, inflicting shatter can be really strong. That'll make enemies take more damage. And then we have our first boss battle. Now, a typical run is going to have three boss battles total. We're going to wrap this video up after just this very first boss battle, having kind of gone through all the basics. So let's begin combat and see what we can do. Now, anytime you're fighting a boss, one of the first things I'd recommend is taking a look at the boss's effect. In this case, uh, Nim is going to gain attack every time we defeat one of his allies. You can see these dudes are only going to be hitting for one. But that's important to know, because the last thing we want to do is get him too pumped up but we do have a pretty good build to handle him. So in this case, we're going to do a scavenger's dash from the start. And that's just going to be picking up our shurikens. From there, we're going to hit ourselves with an after image. And then I'm going to throw out and do a big chunk of damage to him. Now, if I can get a little bit closer, I'm going to want to get out of this. Oh, I wanted to shatter, but I'm not going to be able to. So let's go ahead and hit him with that. I'm going to click the power orb. That's going to give me two. And my biggest thing right now is I don't want to be in this taking damage from Nim. So even though this enemy is going to be annoying, I can't actually kill you yet. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to rush here behind Nim. You can see I'm now out of the AoE. Well, I was out of the AoE. He blocked me. Um, we'll just go over here. Actually, no, I have enough shield that I don't have to. Let's, let's loosen you up. Put that, and then we'll pop this now as well just to get some more shield going. All right, so in this case, we are going to... It's going to be a little more expensive. I could kill all three of these enemies, but I don't want to do that just yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is hit him with that. That is going to apply Shatter, making him take more damage. Grab that. We're going to dash through these three enemies. And even though it looks like I'd be taking a lot of damage, if we can hit him... No, I'm not going to get the crit. Uh, so... Bosses will have these these little, um, I don't know, anyway, these, these little diamonds here. Uh, if you hit that, it's going to make the boss immune, and they're going to go into, like, the next phase. So I'm not going to be able to get enough damage to get that down, but I will still do a solid chunk here. So we're going to hit him with our flurry, get damage. These enemies are all marked, so I can probably kill them. It's not going to be worth it. Instead, I'm going to dash through... That's going to give me two more stacks of shuriken. I'm going to stack those up and try to get some big damage into Nim in an upcoming turn here. So in this case, we'll pick up the power orb. It's not going to be enough to kill him just yet. I'm going to dash through again. Go on the backside of him. And then I can see I will push him to that damage threshold. I'm going to see if I can get all three lined up. Now, I can see um, with that done, his health is stopped right here. Did I not get enough? Hang on. Hmm. He did not do the phase shift. Usually they get a, a quick immunity. I guess Nimbus isn't getting it. Oh, there he is. There we go. Okay. He was close, but not enough. So you saw very briefly there, when you cross this threshold, an enemy will be invulnerable to damage for like one turn. And that's what we had happen right there. So we're going to let's see. We can get... Can I get all, all of you, maybe? I already have one shuriken. I don't really need all of you, but it's worth it anyway. So we're going to dash through. Everybody is marked. Grab that. Pop this. Give ourselves crit. Then we're going to go for the shuriken throw. And when it's like this and you can't really see the enemies, the easiest thing to do is look out for the health bars. I can see in here that I'm going to hit multiple health bars. Um, I know I'm going to hit Nim because he's still lit up. I can also see that up top on his health bar up here. So doing this, I will hit all the enemies and throw that out. Now, alternatively, I would lose my crit. Um, but we, we're just going to throw this. And then Nim is going to do some damage, but I'm going to dash through him. He's going to be giving me another shuriken back, another stack of shield. And then I'm going to get ready to attack in the following turn. Done that. 
that. We got enough that we can go ahead and hit him with that, apply the shatter bonus, and now we're going to go ahead and toss out our shuriken. Some big damage. He's still getting stronger, but because of how much damage we are, are putting out, I'm not terribly worried about it. Dash through, grab that. Don't have a ton of shurikens right now, but that's okay. And for the last one, I will pick up some more shield and another shuriken. And in this case, the most important thing is going to be killing the boss. So if we kill the boss, the other enemies are going to die no matter what. I'm at four shurikens. Let's dash through. See if we can get up to five. Ooh, just barely falling short of killing him. We'll go ahead and hit everybody. You can see he's almost dead. He might actually die here uh, from the bleed. How much health do you have? Yeah, he's going to die at this turn from the bleed. So go ahead, end turn. He's going to attack. That bleed is going to proc. He's going to die, and that's going to be considered a victory. Uh, now, in this case, we got a binding tuner, and since we have all five of our bindings, if we select that, we're going to get a chance to ascend a binding. And this is going to be really powerful. This is going to be really how you, you get your build into a state where it's going to win. So, for example, with this, I could take 100 damage in a huge area, giving me a really strong AoE. Instead, I could be more focused on a single boss, hit three times for 75 damage, and uh, 15 stacks of bleed. Uh, I already have really good single target, so for this particular build, Serrated Sweep probably better. But personally, I'd rather ascend one of my other bindings. So I'm going to reroll in this case. And in this case, we got Shuriken Jutsu, uh, dash of medium distance, gain five Shuriken, which means one dash, and I could immediately go into a flurry for max damage. Or instead, I can inflict Mark, gain one Shuriken, and critical charge. So I could essentially make all of my stuff go up to crit. Uh, both of these are good choices. Personally, I'm a really big fan to this, so I would go ahead and pick that up. And then over here, we got an Epic Augment. Uh, in this case, Discounted Flurry is incredibly strong. Minus will cost. This only costs will, so that means this is going to always be free to use. You can see it now is zero. And then from there, we would hit the Sea of Ink. This would go on to essentially the second stage of the run. We'll have a chance to heal, of course, for free. So we get 15 health back. Some dialogue from Nib and Bin is pretty typical. I'm going to run through that. Font of Wisdom. Uh, in this case, we'll also restore health. So you can see we are all the way topped off. And now we can pick a new area to jump on into and continue the run. Uh, so definitely a lot that we, we kind of covered in the video. I, I, I wasn't even sure how to really structure this because this is, is a very different game from a typical roguelike. You know, you're going through, you're picking your upgrades and you're, you're managing yourself on that little area. Uh, but hopefully this at least gives you an idea of how to go through the combat and how to manage your positioning and whatnot. Like I said, the biggest thing here is really going to be managing your will for movement versus using abilities and making sure you're hitting as many enemies as possible, which I think we did do a pretty good job of demonstrating some stuff like that. Uh, but either way, we are going to wrap things up here. Rest assured, I'm going to be streaming this game a ton. It's something that I've, I've been looking forward to so much. I've been playing it on Steam Deck a ton. It works. It, it's crazy how well this works on Steam Deck. Uh, just, you know, I, you can use the joystick to move around and then the trackpad to, to like really fine tune your uh, your attacks and where they're going to hit. Uh, but definitely make sure, jump in, check it out. This is, this is something I plan on playing with viewers on stream a lot, hopefully, because it's very easy to just pull people in. You can do four player runs on this, which... Uh, as you can imagine, a run with four players gets pretty wild in this game. So we're going to wrap things up here for now. Thanks for coming on by. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're excited for the game, and I'll catch you on the streams.